Okay. Uh, hello, Hassan. <laughs> oh. uh, this is us. Um, this is um, our first um, industry guest talk in this semester. And we are very much delighted that we have a special guest, uh, Esan Hassani Mogadam. He's, he's been a fantastic um, friend to me so far. I don't know about the future. <laughs> we, we, we are family friends, actually. Um, and and Esan has, has, a, has a lot of amazing stories uh, to tell. Um, and talk about it. Um, uh, we, ha we had the pleasure of having a son last year as well, but all of those students who listened to his talk and, and enjoyed um, his insightful um, advice, uh, they are graduated. And happily, many of them are working in different companies. Um, who knows, some of you may end up like working for a son <laughs> sooner or later. So, um, so we are going to listen to, to your story and, 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 and your journey through um, this um, beautiful creative outcome you already have created. And also like uh, we are very keen to, to know a little bit more about um, the latest projects you've been working on, especially Monsters Incorporation TV show as you are the head of um, characters. And, and also like if, if, like, if you might have any um, advice or lessons for our students, how to be a better artist, the ones that might end up working for uh, on, on, on great shows like, like the ones that you're working on. And we finish it with some Q&A. So whoever might have any questions, I will pass on this microphone to you. And then, um, and then we'll have a son answering your questions. Awesome, it's all yours now. Yeah, um, hello everyone. Um, it's, it's great to be uh, just a, uh, seeing you and talking with you guys. Um, thank you for having me. And, uh, it's a pleasure uh, really to, to have this opportunity. Yeah, as uh, Hossein said, uh, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm head of rigging uh, and CFX at Icon. Um, it's, a, it's an animation company located in Vancouver, Canada. And we are mostly working on uh, 3D uh, animation TV series. And um, the, the latest uh, released work was Monsters at Work. As um, uh, I, I'm not sure if you guys um, seen it, but it's fun. It's on TV, uh, on, on Disney Plus uh, at the moment. Four, four uh, I think four episodes have, have come out uh, so far. Every Wednesday there was a new episode. So I encourage you to go and see it. It's very fun. And there was also some clips that you can find online. Um, if you wanna, if you if you're curious, uh, yeah. So um, as um, I, I don't count myself as a rigger. Mostly, I'm a 3D generalist. That I, uh, but I got the chance to uh, to be um, well. But the companies that I worked for needed me to do more rig. But in fact, I I like to do other stuff as well. Um, if I can share my screen, maybe and show some of the works that I've done. That would be lovely. Yeah, that would be lovely. Uh, all right. Okay, starting with the. Uh, this is Icon's website, and in there you can find some of the works that we've been working on. We are working on Transformers right now. Um, it's a very fun TV TV series again. Um, Alice in Wonderland, it's gonna, all of you I'm sure are familiar with the 2D, successful 2D animation. This is a 3D it's version. It's a very cute Alice. You should see the characters. It's just some, like, you know how 
uh, the the 2D animation has a lot of characters, a lot of props talking. Uh, there is the uh, Cheshire Cat, which is like an amazing character. And all, all of those are like right now are gonna be in 3D and it's just amazing. Um, so yeah, this is this is where it's gonna be a very, very uh, fun, fun show. And then there is um, other very uh, interesting shows going on at the moment. There are some that we can talk about, um, but those are just beautiful shows as well. Um, mm -hmm. I think at this point, all the all the uh, like Disney, Netflix, all of all of them trust um, Icon very much, and they're trusting uh, us with their best projects, basically. So I'm lucky to be among the people who are working on these. And um, in fact, we are hiring a lot of a lot of people right from school. If because um, as, as someone, yeah, yeah, as someone who interviews a lot of a lot of different people to hire uh, at least for rigging um, I uh, I don't look at the work experience at all um, just because someone has worked 10 years in the, in the industry doesn't mean they're better than a graduate in my opinion um, I ask a lot of questions um, technical questions artistic questions uh, and questions that um, need the person to be creative to give up to come up with, a, with the right answer. And if I, we have, we've had in the past, uh, people, junior riggers who've been right out of school have been more successful than the people who we've hired as senior riggers who've been, who've been in, 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 the, in the industry for years. And uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, I think these days for, for our job, uh, the cool thing is that people look at your, your portfolio and to have a good portfolio you don't need to be working anywhere really you can just sit at home learn and then create something beautiful and then people will trust you with a job um so yeah um and um and these are some of the works uh oh, i think this one is on the side so we can take a look at this one maybe Do you have the audio from this? I don't. Okay, so maybe you can we can share and play this one so people in there can can can. Uh... I I open it. Okay. Yeah, I can, I think you can um, okay. probably. I can open it like. Give me. Maybe you can search. Uh, I can. Oh, monsters at work trailer or something and then Mas there are a few or just because then people can hear the sound yeah, and yeah yeah i found it and i'm playing it now all right i stop sharing them so you can you can share Nobody saw nothing. Well, Nobody saw nothing. Uh -huh. well, this is a temporary reassignment. Good for you. Well, 
Spitfires are going anywhere. I'll teach all these scary monsters how to be funny. I'm not sure this was such a good idea. I just delivered the new kids. I had an idea. Welcome to Monsters Incorporated. That was fun. Uh, yeah, it's a very, a very, very fun show. Um, I can see um, that while uh, the the nature of the original Monsters Corporation, like that, the, I mean, in terms of the look and the quality, has been kind of uh, preserved or just as, but. Uh, the result is as neat and clean as, as the original one, but it's much more economic, right? In terms of like, because you have to go through creating lots and lots of minutes rather than just like an hour and a half. True, true. But the clients are still Disney, right? And yeah, yeah. creative people who uh, review the, the result are just expecting the same. <laughs> They, oh. they don't they, they don't say okay this is tv series let's just get away with it um they're, they're very their expectations are very high um and uh it's getting higher and higher with technology getting mm. better every day and tools are getting better people are getting better pipelines are getting better and that's uh, and also with a lot of people with pandemic and everything every everyone staying at home people started to watch a lot of tv and that meant um well, the company's streaming services uh, are really like uh, trying to produce more high quality uh well, basically more high quality work so they can they can keep keep the clients right and then that meant um that uh they they're they're willing to pay more and that means um they're expecting more high quality stuff and um i think that's been helping uh with the with the quality of the works recently hopefully after pandemic it will go on but mm -hmm. well who knows um uh, i'm i'm th i'm assuming uh the like disney or netflix won't won't uh, uh reduce their expectations that's what i what i, uh, what I think um but yeah so and they're very picky <laughs> they're very picky very big clients i we we saw lots of different projects are they happening concurrently at the same time yes yeah and um, basically we have a lot of shows running at the same time oh wow uh, yeah um all of these in fact um like yes exactly these guys um and uh, and these ones we have some shows that are not here but i think we yeah we have a lot of a lot of shows running at the same time we are 30 people 30 riggers um 30 in, in rigging artists only in rigging wow yeah and uh, that's the largest rigging department it's, it's a it's a huge <laughs> team and and it's growing. Uh, we're still hiring. Um, they're just just looking for people. But there is not enough riggers, good riggers. There is a lot of bad riggers. Um, <laughs> there is a lot of there is a lot of bad artists out there. But the good artists are are rare. Uh, really, that's um, uh, it's they're very hard to find. And right now, being the artist market because of the pandemic, I think again. Um, people, uh, like people all have very good, like multiple offers from different companies. So it's hard to find good riggers these days. So what do you mean by a good rigger, Esa? Sorry for interrupting mm -hmm. you right in the middle of it, if that's no, okay. No, uh, no, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think a good rigger is someone who, who has technical and artistic uh, knowledge at the same time. We have we have a lot of people who think rigging is just coding or just putting joints and skinning things like that. But in fact, in my opinion, a good rigger is someone who can draw well, who knows anatomy, who who knows motion, who knows who loves animation, who watches a lot of animation, and 
and likes and knows the principles of animation. So that is the artistic part. And, and also the, a good rigger should know, um, obviously the technical part, meaning you have to know coding, Python, uh, Maya API is a plus. Um, if you wanna be, become a senior, then Maya API. Um, and then the, the, I think one of the things that sets uh, a, a super good rigor from a normal rigor is math. If you have 3D math knowledge, um, like if you know vectors and if you know matrices, it sounds boring, but um, when you work with it in, in 3D and you understand it, it's very fun actually. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, three, three, a, a triangle maybe, just a uh, artistic, math, coding. I, I could say these three could define a very good brigade. Interesting. Yeah, um, and uh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, facial rigging. Uh, I don't even count normal body rigging and facial rigging because those are those are the like must. Those, those are must. You have to have them. And then if you have them, you, you're, a, you're a rigger. But if you have the other three, then you're a very good rigger. Mm. Yeah, so um, these are, these are some, of, some, of other, uh, some of my uh, other works. Um, like you can see that in the past, I wasn't a rigger. Uh, I didn't even know what rigging was. I was interested in other stuff like modeling. Everyone starts with modeling, which is I think normal. It's the, it's the first step to, to 3D world, I think. Something very visual. You can see what's what's going on in 3D. You can, um, so, but after that, if you get bored from modeling, you, you get to do other stuff, you learn other stuff. I, um, I did a lot of different things. Uh, like this thing um, uh, won me a lot of, a lot of awards in, like in, on CG Society, CG Hub, and those, uh, and those like famous websites, 3D related websites. When you made that, that one, what year? Do you remember that? Well, I think it was 2012, 2011, oh. sorry. Okay, 11 years Ten. ago. Yeah. 10 yeah. years ago. 10 years ago. Yeah. 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 So, um, I posted it on ArtStation five years ago because ArtStation didn't exist 10 years ago. Uh, but yeah, this one was also published on Exposé, the book. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, and then from there, uh, I was always interested in, um, in art and was always doodling. Um, but then the companies that I, and, I, and motion, like I started I was hired as an animator in a company and then the, the riggers left. And then they asked me if I can rig and I said, yes. And that's, I think how, how I become a rigger. Like mm -hmm. I, I knew rigging, simple rigging, but then I had to follow it like very, um, like I have to, I had to leave other stuff to become a good rigger basically. And then, yeah, and I still haven't left art though. I still continue drawing, painting, um, I remember yeah. that last year you you shared your the sketches on your sketchbook with us. Lots of lovely characters. I I love your wolf character. Have you had a chance to to make it? It's gonna be a very stupid, funny, lovely wolf. <laughs> like in three D. In three D, yeah. Have Have you had a chance no. to work on it in three D yet? No, no, uh, no. It's um, yeah, it's um. I, I'm actually these these days I'm interested more in 2D more and more. Uh, there is yeah. a very interesting animation from Australia. It's called Bluey. I don't know if you've got if you guys know it. It's an um, animation for kids. But now oh, yeah. these days I'm interested in these kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> this is watch, pure you, art. Uh, you watch it with your with your daughter together. <laughs> I, I sometimes bet you... I watch it alone. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're enjoying more. <laughs> I do. Like, she wants to watch other stuff, and I said, "Do you want to watch Bluey? Like, we can watch that one together." 
And I think this one is just pure art. It's, it's amazing simplicity. The, um, it's just pure, pure art. And I think in the future, as, as time goes by, the technology becomes so available. easy, mm. easy and available. I think in the future, like that button to rig things probably will become a, become a reality. And these days, you know, we have, um, we, these days we know uh, well, there is this machine learning when you can when you can just uh, give it a like a like a film yourself and then that trans it transfers it to Morgan Freeman's face from just one image. Uh, that means technology is helping you without modeling, without texturing, without anything. Just make Morgan Freeman come alive. Yeah, that that is happening right now. And imagine what happens in twenty years. Probably. A lot of things will be AI, uh, artificial intelligence, mm. and that's when art becomes important. Mm. But like you cannot make bluey with artificial intelligence. You have yeah. to have art. You have to have. You have to have uh, creativity. A, creativity and like ex exaggerated um, view of things. So yeah, if I if I go back um, to becoming a student again, like if I go back to twenty years ago, uh, like, and I don't know what to do, I'll probably just follow um, follow creative parts more than the uh, more than the technical parts. Although the technical parts are very important, but then things are becoming easier. Like people are becoming more specialized in uh, in technical parts. It's very hard to. You either become very, uh, very technical, or you become very artistic, mm -hmm. and that is the way to, I think, um, succeed in the future. Right now, you you can have uh, a combo of both to become a rigger, but then in the future, probably rigging for rigging, you don't have to know a lot of technical stuff because everything will be available already. Like I don't know if you you guys heard, but there is meta human. Yeah, uh, they're using it. Few of them are using it just now, Esther. Yeah. 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 Look, in the future, probably like, no one will break faces anymore. Why do they need to rig faces when, or model faces when you have such things? Like, uh, it's just amazing. And imagine if this happens for other stuff as well. Like we have it for humans now. Maybe in the future we have it for other creatures animals or or even fantasy characters that we can add horn maybe combine a snake with a bird or something that is possible that is like we can see it already mm. and this means you have to still have some level of artistic um, um, abilities and creativity to come up with a with something appealing uh, so yeah, or or you can be so good in coding and math that you can create the system behind this. So people who have written this guy, this this system, are just some genius people who know artificial intelligence um, very well, and uh, they know rigging, they know modeling, they uh, they know three D math, they know programming, right? You can either be one of those or the ones that use these guys to create something appealing for the audience. So you have been a, a fantastic visual effects artist as well, Esan. Uh, I remember you have worked on um, the, the, so last year you showed us some snapshots of the dragon character in in Thor Ragnarok, right? So, yeah. so, so you 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 had some very interesting stories about that. So, how's the how, how do you feel like, or what what did you take from all that like ultra realistic kind of visual effects work, and to to now very stylized, very um, you know 
very different. These are very different modes of the, uh, production, right? So, what did you take with you from from the visual effects world to this like TV show world? Uh, well, I've always loved animation from um, since I was a kid, um, and I. Uh, and I was uh, also interested in, in visual effects, like um, things that got me interested in visual effects was Matrix, or oh, Terminator, Terminator. Yeah, <laughs> Terminator, Terminator 2 yeah. was the, like I watched it every day, because <laughs> <laughs> every afternoon at five. Um, it's like watching that one. And um, so, yeah, I love both. Uh, I love Lion King as a kid and, and Terminator, both both sides of a spectrum, and um, and I think um, I, I was in in VFX for four years, and then after that I got bored, and I thought, okay, mm. uh, it's time for me to go back to what I love the most, animation, mm. and uh, and then I just moved um, to to Icon, and I'm really happy, I'm really grateful to be part of such amazing team. Um, yeah, maybe I can share some of the uh, yeah, yeah. some will, of the work that we've lovely. done. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I can I can find it then share the screen. Uh, okay, uh, I think, or maybe probably it's just very quite if we do it together. I think there was this um, uh, Thor um, dragon. See, well, we can find it. Um, uh, yeah, so this is one of the uh, one of the very cool shows that I worked that I had the opportunity to work on in Method Studio with some amazing other riggers and artists. Um, I was responsible for uh, for the dragon. Uh, It was a very unique dragon with like um, features that you cannot find in other dragons. Like, yeah, it's we used to laugh <laughs> at the studio uh, about this. This the guy thrust, doesn't have wings. Yeah, it, it has thrusters. Thrusters, yeah. <laughs> like we were laughing at the idea, but then, I mean, that's what uh, sets it apart from other other dragons right in in movies they have to come up with new ideas sometimes it works sometimes not this one i think it was a although we laughed at the beginning but in the end it turned out to be a very cool character mm. so what part of the the character you 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 worked on i think the, the brick completely was uh, was uh, done by me uh, there were the obviously life. there was body like and the face. Yes, yeah. I even model. I even modeled the muscles uh, one by wow. one. Wow. Um, so because in the past I was a modeler and I knew anatomy, so it helped me to to create the the muscles with this guy. Uh, but then if there was always a lot of other people who work on on the same thing yeah. in the shot. Like for example, let me show you. For example, in this shot, I think um, that the, the dragon flies, although it's not visible here, and it was, it turns out in the in the end because comp and, and color grading and everything, lighting, uh, we can't see it really, but there was muscles in this rig. And also there was a lot of people, they call them CFX artists, character FX artists. They did a lot of um, simulations. They did a lot of um, shot sculpting to make it look good. Uh, the muscles uh, that didn't work from the rig. Sometimes, probably most of the time, the rig is not that good to work for every single shot and every single pose. So that's why we have character effects artists that go there inside the shot after the animation is done. And then they start sculpting the pose 
to make it look better. Um, and then, yeah, we can't we can't just ignore the work that a lot of people have have put into this. It's not just me. I I rigged yes, but then for this guy that guy to come alive, there has been a lot of people uh, efforts. Mm. Fantastic. So you're the head of rigging and character FX, CFX. So we have an idea of the rig, but like you started talking about what is CFX. So can you let our students know what is actually CFX and how they can be a good CFX artist? You, tell, you told how they can be a good rig artist, but what about CFX artists? <laughs> Yeah, that's a very, very good question because uh, there is a lot like CFX is one of the very, very uh, like good jobs that they don't have a lot of candidates for. So it's a, a new lot job. of, a lot yeah. of, it's, 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 it's not, I don't, I can't say if it's mm. new, but it's unknown. Mm. Mm. It's definitely unknown and, and they pay well for it. Uh, How like they? there oh, is okay. there is a lot of yeah there is a lot of um, there is a lot of job for it but people don't know it so that's why especially especially like people out of school or, um, they, they, they because they haven't seen it because this only happens in production mm. it's only for high quality work this never this is never practiced at home or um, probably never at schools. And that's why we don't have a lot of CFX artists. That's why most of the CFX artists are from other departments. Like for example, I'm a rigger, I become a CFX artist, or the guy is an animator and he becomes a CFX artist. So it's a very good chance for you to get a job if, you, if you're a good CFX artist. How do you become a CFX artist? Oh, okay. So CFX artist is referred to by different names in different companies. Some companies call it technical animation. Some companies call it character effects some companies call it creature creature artists i know that some companies called it final layout which doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. uh, these are these are big companies though <laughs> and there is there is also it's uh, some some people call it um uh what was it called a uh, shot final link so if you see any of these you can't get that job how um do you have to know ncloth in Maya. So in Maya, you have to know NCLOF. And if you know Ziva, uh, Ziva is a, is a plugin for Maya that you yeah. can, can create muscles and fascia. Um, so that's, those are two main ones. And uh, also hair, oh, sorry, hair, <laughs> the three main ones, probably cloth and hair are the most important ones. So if you have, um, experience with uh, hair simulation like if you create an x-gen hair and then you can simulate it um, in wind or if a girl for example puts her hair back or or the wind blows through the to the hair and um, these are the things that catch um, uh, recruiters eyes or, or supervisors eyes so those are the things that you can do probably to um, like yeah get the job um, so those are the things that you can learn easily uh, in cloth and hair, the simulating exchange hair with and hair. And then uh, probably you can, you, ha you can you have access to the student version of the uh, Ziva, I think. Yeah, yeah, Ziva so, is already installed in all, all computers and second year awesome. visual effects students, they started, they're doing some assignments with Ziva at the moment. And third That's year, great. if they want. <laughs> yeah yeah so so yeah those are the things that and also probably uh, just anatomy just learning anatomy would help because in a lot of um in a lot of shots they want the muscle to look good and if if you know how it looks if you know how where the muscle starts or where it ends and how it looks when they when the when the arm is in different sorry. positions then then you can sculpt it to look good in that frame of the movie, right? Mm. And that's uh, what people refer to as shot, shot sculpting. Uh, and that is also a very, very important part of uh, like a CFX artist job. Mm. Um, yeah, and also these days, um, 
some some companies also expect you to do crowd simulation that also is another unknown very well paid job if if you're a crowd artist um so like for example we have one rabbit that has simple animation and then you want to fill a st stadium with with rabbits then then that's the job of a crowd artist there is plugins to do crowd uh, like Gollum, I think for Maya Gollum is, is one and uh, Houdini can do it very well. Uh, so if you know Houdini crowd also is a very, very good one to do crowd. Mm. Great, awesome. Uh, we are, um, so like just, just before we move into Q&A and I, I ask, um, my lovely students to ask you questions. Um, do you have? Well, we 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 learned a lot so far about like how to be to be a, a good artist. But like, so they they're gonna graduate soon. So just imagine that like they they're gonna come and apply for a position that you are um, you require in your department. So what, what you know, criteria are you looking at? So who do you pick? Okay, so the first step is to get a chance to be interviewed. And that is the most important, I think, part. Um, if your demo reel is not interesting, it's, it doesn't even get to my hand. Mm -hmm. uh, recruiters just pass it. Mm -hmm. And so this means you have to have a good demo reel. How do you have a good demo reel? Um, look, look up the good demo reels. <laughs> like, yeah. I usually do this uh, for myself. If I want to make a demo reel, I would do this. I would just go rigging demo reel. And then I look the most, um, the most famous one on, um, on YouTube. Let's see. Okay, even from the start, the character is appealing. I like it. It's moving. It shows the it shows the rig in motion. It shows the rig in different poses, and then it goes and shows the different abilities of the character. Um, so this is already this already caught my eye, um, caught my attention. So this is make, good. Make sure your rigs do good twerking. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> That's a must. Um, and then if it has facial animation, that's that's uh, a really important part of the part of the demo reel. Let's look at some other other reels to see if we can find some bad ones. Maybe it's also helpful to look at bad demo reels. Yeah, I I usually don't don't like when they put uh, shots from from work, but sometimes they have to because they they haven't done anything personal. Uh, they haven't done personal projects. I do care about personal projects a lot, but oh. a lot of people don't so, get so the chance. Some, some projects that we I do on my own time and spend, um, you know, worth more for you, right? Rather than Definitely. the ones that I'm part of, like a, a big team that I just do a tiny work on it. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's it's just hard to judge uh, people's abilities based on a teamwork. I think, in my opinion, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. when it's a personal project, you know that you you're hired. You're seeing. You get what you see. Um, so I usually don't care about these guys. I usually just pass it. And then I, I, I like these parts. I like, I take a look at this. And then if it shows advanced stuff, like this is advanced already, um, then, uh, then probably I, we set an interview, set up an interview, and then we talk with the person. Usually I ask questions like how you did, how, just explain the setup that you've done here, just to make sure that they've done it and no one else did uh, because you don't know, like we can hire a guy by just 
like a demo reel that someone else did for them. Mm. So just to avoid that um, and also to know the person better and to know their level exactly. Mm. Uh, we asked them to explain what they did uh, on the on the demo reel. Um, this is good. This is a combo of the show's facial rigging, which is great. Uh, I think this guy is a very good rigger. Um, Okay, it has very advanced rigging stuff. Um, and this is also very important, you see in here, he says the whole character rigging. It means they have done the, the, the body, the face, and no one else well, did half of it. Okay, so this one was a good reel as well. And these things also are interesting. You see, things that are uh, you, you don't see this in every every demo reel. Try to do something that shows your interests. It doesn't matter if you're doing rigging or whatever. As long as you show something that is not like is not seen already by people. Like a lot of people put FKIK and no one cares about that. Like everyone knows how to do FKIK already. Right? You should you should show something more than that. You should show something that is different showing your code also is interesting because i already understand how good you are in coding by looking at your code so that also is important if you know coding just show show the code um, i know that um, some of the some of the students have this half of their screen showing their code and on the right they have their results that is a very good idea i think um, it's hard to find uh, bad rigging demo reels, I think, uh, just because if they're famous, they come up and if, they, if they're bad, maybe we can go to the hundreds page. And <laughs> I can go very down to find uh, bad demo reels. Um, but yeah, just watch, watch the most viewed demo reels and, and see what they've done. And then you find the pattern, you find, you'll find what's there avoid putting unappealing characters in your demo reel. If you need to ask a friend to do a modeling for you, do that. Never rig such thing because this is already like, even if the guy is good, the reel is looking so bad, probably it doesn't even get to my hands probably, even if they have good abilities and that's unfortunate, but probably it shows their artistic insights right it, it shows how how good they are uh, artistically if if this guy for example like, i'm sorry for the person like i i'm not i'm not trying to like uh disrespect but um seems to be very junior just because of the look of this character uh so and probably they have some advanced systems going on for the lips, but because it's not appealing, we're gonna pass. Just because at the moment, rigging is not just technical, it's also um, artistic. Like for example, if you wanna make a nice smile, like for the character, it needs to be genuine, it needs to be appealing. If it's not, then well, it's better, it's better to just look for someone else. Um, so yeah, definitely try to try to make sure that uh, the characters on your reel are appealing. Yeah, these are bad. You see, this is just. I prefer not to even watch this. I pro probably I just pass these guys. And this is interesting. I'm gonna take a look at this one. Probably the person who has made this character or used this character, and you can see it has a simple rendering as well. A simple render will help 
also. Um, oh, Samona Montazman actually works for us. She's at Icon. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just hired her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, she's been with us um, at Icon for, for almost two years now. So you can see that the Timuriel is interesting, right? Um, wow. So yeah, try to try to find in, interesting characters. Avoid avoid ugly stuff. Mm. <laughs> this uh, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Great, thank you so much. Uh, that was a that was a Good great thing. talk so far. So let's move on to question and answers. So any questions? Us. Okay, pass it. Hello. Um, mm. Out of curiosity, what's it like living in Vancouver? Is it Vancouver? That's a good question. Yeah, in terms of just the art world or visual effects. Um, it's, I think it's a, there was tons of companies here, right? So the good thing about Vancouver is that they call it second Hollywood or something. Um, just because there was vast amount of film productions going on, a lot of a lot of animation, uh, film, visual effects, and, and game industries and and uh, studios here, in, right, are located here in Vancouver. So yeah, you can probably artists um, will have a, have a I think have a lot of opportunities um, in here. I like it very much. I just don't like the rain. <laughs> I think in, in terms of weather, it's very similar to New Zealand. Yeah, probably very, very much like this. Probably. <laughs> probably. We don't know. Danny. Danny's from Vancouver. I can't, I can't hear. The, mic, the oh. microphone is far. I'm from Vancouver. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Also, make sure to apply for icon. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions from, from this side? Oli? No? Anyone there interested in rigging? Anyone interested in rigging? Raise your hand. They do a lot of rigging, actually. They're, they're humble, but like, <laughs> what you have shown uh, just like a really scared them. <laughs> uh i should show you my first regs shouldn't be scared <laughs> um we we use for for the sake of speed we use a lot of um auto rigs like m gear so that speeds up the process for for the student projects so um but they have the chance of expanding and like working on on their skills in more detail if they want to yeah, definitely. I think one of the things that I've seen in students real, like if they have rigs, I ask them how how you rig it. Did you use a script? Did you rig it yourself manually? Mm. It's a, and if they have used a third party script, probably it's better not to mention it. Probably it's <laughs> no. I I try not to as soon as you say this is m gear or this is advanced skeleton the problem with that is that okay we, we're not using that at work uh, and probably you need to show something custom custom rigging mm. you, sh you need to show how how you can make things that is more important if even if it's just one arm rig and you've done everything yourself that's more important for me um than, than a whole character that is done using a script that you haven't written. Or even better than that, if you can automate, if you can write a script that rigs that R, that's perfect. Mm. Mm. So yeah. So the development and scripting side is, is, a, is a great bonus for, for an advanced rigging. Yes, yes, absolutely. Also, any other question than the weather in Oak, in Vancouver and then uh, 
and see what? Ah, can can we see your first rigs? The base level. Uh, <laughs> the base level. I have some ugly rigs. Let me see. Let me see if I can find them. Hmm. Okay, no one has seen this, so. Don't show it <laughs> now we know you. <laughs> okay. Now we know your your I history. I don't know if I can. I, okay. Oh, I found it. I found an ugly one. Sorry. No one knows about this. Oh, well, no one knew about this. Uh, let's see. So this is mostly a general, I think, uh, a generalist reel. But and th these are some of the good, good reel good rigs that I did uh, but then I think if I can find some of the bad rigs well I guess this one is ugly enough and then what else do I have oh oh yeah look so these are just simple joints and fk <laughs> nothing there is nothing there. oh yeah look at this one I remember those projects. It's it's for like at least sixteen years ago, right? <laughs> a long time ago, two thousand six. Yeah. Yeah, two thousand six. Um, yeah, but it still it still holds up, right? <laughs> yeah, animation, animation, animation helped, helped a lot. Animation yeah. helped. So you can see in the face, for example, there is just one smile blanching. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like they can't even. Uh, move the corner of the mouth, it's just one is one. This is very, very old. Yeah, 2005, so, six. Okay, look at this. So uh, don't worry, you're, you're already better than this. Uh, but these are the good ones that I did in 2011, but then in the middle I have, and these are the best ones that I had at the time I put them on the reel. I have some ugly ones that I didn't, they didn't end up in the reel. So yeah, don't, don't get disappointed. Just, uh, these days the tools are better already. I think can, can create some interesting rigs these days. Awesome, fantastic. Um, if you guys don't have any other questions, we can wrap uh, this up. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your talk and your insightful um, words and, and advice for us. And Absolutely. I know it's, it's pretty late there. there. It's 11 p.m. I think over there. We know that Almost. like, we have, yeah, uh, you, the time that you spent for, with us is so precious and we really appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>